Exploring a remote box canyon is always a lot of work and has a tendency to be a bit risky. You need to think on your toes because you will be tested at every step. Now I understand that rolling the dice in this harsh landscape, it's never an easy decision, but if you play those cards right, the juice can certainly be worth the squeeze. Folks, this is my day in the box. Let's go! <laughs> Popped out too. Hell yeah. Well, I am pleased and honored to introduce you to the first Boxy Brown of the morning. What a great little fish. Oh man, it is chilly. I'm gonna get him back. See ya, buddy. <laughs> yes. Let's freaking go. That's awesome. And I got to test out my dudette. Yeah. See ya. Oh no! Man, losing that third fish was a real heartbreaker. That would have been a nice trifecta, but it put my mind at ease to at least know that we're fishing this stream and that we hadn't come all this way just to get skunked. We at least knew they were fish in this canyon. But the further we moved upstream, man, I could really feel the full effects of old Jack Frost. Over the past few kind of chillier weeks here in New Mexico, it was clear that he had been through this box canyon whistling an icy tune, and it was really starting to take full effect. The biting cold of the canyon wind left my fingers and ears quite tender. But it was clear to see that I wasn't the only one feeling the full effects of the wintertime blues. The fish were really acting slow, and during the wintertime months, this is just gonna happen. Usually, I'll notice a change where fish will move from the riffle sections to deeper pools, and that's a concept or a phenomenon I like to call holding up. So even though we were doing our best and casting into the riffles, I didn't have much faith in fish actually sitting there. It was in the deeper pools where they could get a little bit lower in the water column into warmer water and just seek refuge from the nasty wintertime effects. Well, we have been running fast and hard and we've gotten into a few fish, but I didn't realize, I checked my watch, it's almost 10 o'clock or it's after 10 o'clock and that sun has still yet to hit the water. This box canyon, I mean, the conditions, they're gonna be pretty rough, no matter what box canyon you're fishing, but this one especially, and yeah, it is probably upper 50s, maybe 60s in the sunlight, but down here, man, it is still so chilly. I'm freezing my little butt off, but yeah, so far so good, happy with the fish that we got, and we got a lot more river to cover, so let's get after it.
Really happy we got that fish. But this entire day, I feel like we've been going up staircase. And this, I mean, this box canyon, it must be losing so much elevation. But it looks like we're gonna hit another rocky section. So let's get through that and hopefully we can find some more punch pools. Dude, let's go! Yes! This is a dandy little brown. Wow, I didn't expect to get a fish this big today. This is so awesome, let's give him a look. You can tell, oh shit. Well, after that flop, it swam off fine, no worries there. But what I wanted to say is that that looked like a post-spawn brown. It was real slender, real snaky, and I don't think there's a red in the middle of this deep pool, so no worries there. That's awesome getting on those post-spawners. Nice to see that the, the cycle's kind of moving along a little further south in the Rio watershed. So, ah, enough rambling. Let's get back in there, man. That was so sick. That's a good fish. dude let's go look at this kyped up son of a gun man that is a that is a fantastic fish and you can tell he is old 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 he's got a mondo adipose on him. that thing is huge some deserve the title of dimey dime others like this one this is a whole ass buck look at this bucked up nasty brown man <laughs> that thing is a son of a gun right there Holy cow. Yeah, that that's the canyon trophy we were looking for today. That is a fantastic, like, I honestly don't know if we'll do any better than that. That That is what you want when you come to a place like this. All right, <laughs> let's get this sucker back. He's ready. All right, buddy, are you good? Oh, <laughs> just like that. See you later, alligator. <laughs> you know, there's always a lot of risk doing an adventure like this. Uh, First and foremost, this is my first time ever on this creek, and on top of that, it's pretty rugged, and the climate has been, uh, let's just say, difficult. <laughs> so, getting on a fish like that is just amazing, especially, I mean, this entire fall has been a grinder. Fishing's been abysmal, so just all those factors adding up, man, it just, oh, look, it's so hype, and to think about that fish in a pool like this, it has never left. I bet it was born here, reared here and he's just been pumping dumbbells just getting the biggest meanest buckiest nasty brown he can be man and that oh that's everything that's that's by far going to be the best fish today I, i'd be willing to put money on that <laughs> Woo, man but what's wild as i continue to ramble we still have yet to see the sun like i have i've not gotten hit by the sun all day this box canyon, it's no joke. I'd be willing to bet that's why the bite's been kind of slow because the water is freezing ass cold and these fish are like, dude, I'm waiting for three o'clock for the sun to hit the water. <laughs> and then, yeah, it'll set at five. Woo! Okay, enough rambles. Let's, uh, let's jump back in there. Well, with that brownie brown, that completes the brown trout hat trick. That is fantastic. Gotta love getting a nice, nice triplet out of there. That's, oh, that's so money. We'll see this guy back. Woo. Bye. Woo <laughs> yeah, dude, let's freaking go. Oh, we're pressed on our luck, though. Let's move up to the next one. <laughs> It always feels good getting a nice mixed bag of trout. 
we caught a rainbow, we caught a brown. This, ladies and gentlemen, this is a cut bow. This is a hybrid between a, what I'm assuming, a Rio Grande cutthroat and one of the rainbows. Let's get a look at this guy, he's pretty cool. I mean, come on, is that a beautiful fish or what? Wow, let's get this guy back. See ya. Wow. I'm not even kidding. The sun has not touched the water today. That water is so flipping cold. Oh my land. Whew. Yeah, yeah, look at you. Plumpy plump. I tell you what, it's so cold down here in the canyon but the fishing is really starting to heat up. I'm loving this. Great little guy. We'll get him back. See ya. Thank you. Woo, let's go, man. That's awesome. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's good fish. Go, man, come on! <laughs> nice! Well, that's fantastic. <laughs> the further up this box we've gotten, the better the fishing's been. I don't know if that's because of pressure or because of uh, temperature or conditions. I'm not sure. Again, this is my first time ever being here, so just getting the fish that we are is so sweet. And this one especially, on the three-way, I mean, that's cheeky as hell. Ladies and gentlemen, that is one post-spawn snaky brown trout in this epic, epic box. I mean, that's insane. But that's uh, <laughs> another one for the books and let's get this guy back. There you go. That is so sick. Let's freaking go. Well, in true McGillicuddy fashion, I have gone all day running very hard and I haven't even stopped and talked about my setup. So. Let's, uh, yeah, put, put a pause on the fishing for a second and let's look at how we're getting these today. All right, so our first rod is the three-way, the ant leaf cutter. This is my dry drop setup. I've got a Rio Creek line on this sucker, so it just, it can roll cast for days. I like this for smaller stream scenarios, kind of like this one, and it's great for a dry drop repairing, and that's what we have on. A really kind of weird looking, pink-headed rainbow warrior guy, and you know, of course, the adjustable dry dropper in the caddis variety. So if you guys aren't tired of me saying it by now, you, you're gonna be soon, but go check out the adjustable dry dropper vid. I'll show you how to tie it, show you how to rig it, the whole nine yards. But that is our small setup. Let's take a look at our five weight. And here is our nine foot five weight. I mean, this is bread and butter, folks. And I've got on my deeper nymphing setup. We've got a Again, weird looking rainbow warrior and a scud looking guy. So both are tungsten, both are very heavy. And then all under a New Zealand strike indicator. I like to have flexibility, I like to adjust. And that's why, you know, I use the adjustable dry dropper. I use, yeah, the New Zealand strike indicator. It just, you gotta be able to get down to those fish when, yeah, the water demands it. So that is the rod and reel setup. Deep breaths, we did it. We actually freaking did it. <laughs> so now I can go back to fishing. <laughs> what a quick. Well. That really didn't take too much longer, did it? Damn. <laughs> This one's got some spunk to it, but we will uh, send him back to the drink. See you, sir. Bow. Dude, that's freaking awesome. It's <laughs> the evening bite. It's only two o'clock, but man, a sunset's I think at like 545, so it's pretty much the evening bite at this point. Damn. That's another thing too. I haven't taken the old three weight out for a spin in a long time. Feeling the fight, that's, uh, that's very nice. It's 
a good reason to bring a three weight to a small stream. I have no clue where this stalker boy is getting in from, but he must have uh, must have gotten washed down from upstream because there's no way anyone is dumping fish in here. But we'll uh, send Squirt back. See you, buddy. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> That's three fish, man. That's crazy. Oh. Well, as you can see, the sun never came out. I mean, we got a little bit here and there, but I can see it now going up and over the canyon and it's starting to set. So I think it's time for us to scoop. I've broken everything down. We are ready to just scramble the hell out of here. And yeah, fingers crossed, <laughs> we'll get out of here in one piece. Let's go. Now more than ever, it was time to muster up everything that we had left. Every step needed to be measured and good decisions, they come at a premium. Because when you're tired and you're ready to be done, this is where bad things happen. But my useless hands and cinder block feet were only ushered on by the pure beauty of this canyon and, well, the promise of a warm shower to thaw out my frozen body when I got home. And with all that in mind, there was no way I was gonna let a few slippery boulders or prickly cactus keep us from getting up and out of this box canyon. And I gotta say, getting out of an adventure like this, there's no better feeling. And I am forever amazed at the hidden beauty that a place like New Mexico holds. You really just have to be willing and, well, able to roll that die sometimes and seek out these treasures. Well, boy, howdy. It would seem as though you've made it to the end of the video. And all I gotta say, as always, is thank you so much. You know, this whole thing we're doing over here, it's growing so quick. So the more that you like and comment and share with your other fishy buddies out there, the more this thing grows and it's, it's just this weird algorithm thing. But be sure, as always, to leave a comment down below. I love hearing what you guys have to say. And I love talking with y'all. So if you're digging on, all the flower season content on YouTube. You just can't get enough. Well, I've got I got three great pieces of news for you. <laughs> First and second would be the Instagram and the Discord. You guys already know the deal. Instagram, we got the fishy picks, sometimes giveaways, and then on the cord, we've got a ton. I mean, a ton of the best people talking shop. It's a great place to go if you're a new fly fisher. You know, it's an environment of varied skilled levels and they're always willing to help so get over there join the conversation ASAP Rocky and the third thing which is kind of new is the patreon and the patreon yeah it's a uh, a bit different than the content we do on YouTube this is more the insider this is more the information based kind of uh, yeah content the stuff going on in this little noggin that kind of gets the the idea out and then actually on the water so if you kind of want to see how my uh, thinking process goes waypoints maps uh, real-time information on streams patreon would be a great place to go and it'd be a great way to support the file season team man this is you know it's a lot of work so anything helps but enough on that before we scoot I got to give two buggy shout outs first and foremost would be ant you already know the deal ant has been They've been a fly out season supporter pretty much since day one. They are so cool. And they sent over these rods early in the summer and we've been rocking them. Just our onesie twosie, just bop bop, one two punch all summer and into fall. So if you want to go check out Ant, I would appreciate it. I know they would too. And the second thing, pretty new to the arsenal, is Hex. And Hex sent over this just badass net and I am loving it. So big shout out to them. And as always, the QR codes are linked down below. Mike 15 for Ant and All Season 10 for the Nets. Go get you some, go get you, you know, whatever, whatever it is over there. And yeah, enjoy it. I know I sure do. So folks, as the 
canyon light is quickly dissipating, I gotta scoot out of here. I'm gonna be one stuck son of a gun. So wherever you find yourself, be it in a beautiful box canyon or in your backyard, I sure hope you're keeping those feet in the water. And until next time, tight lines.